Theresa Davey, 1894-1963 Theresa Davey was an Irish deaf playwright who wrote many plays for the Abbey Theatre. The Dublin Theatre of the Deaf performed one of her plays, The King of Spain's Daughter, at the Abbey Theatre's Peacock Stage from the 19th to the 23rd of September 2017. One way to come to an understanding of Theresa Davies work is to compare it to that of the Irish writers who had come before her. Teresa was born in 1894, three years before W.B. Yeats, Lady Gregory and Edward Martin would found the Irish Literary Theatre, which would later become the Abbey Theatre. Teresa Davey became part of a new generation of Irish playwrights. In 1913, Teresa contracted Meniere's disease, which affected her balance and caused her to lose her hearing while in her studies at University College Dublin. At around the same time, her formerly well-off family's fortunes went on the decline and she was needed more often to stay at home with her mother and her sisters in Waterford at Landscape, which was the name of the family estate. Both while her hearing was deteriorating and after it was lost entirely, Theresa made frequent trips to London, England. The purpose of these trips was ostensibly to receive lip reading instruction, but Theresa also made use of them to attend London's theatrical performances. In the late 1920s, she began writing her own plays and the first stage production of Theresa Davies' work, Reapers, was performed at the Abbey Theatre on the 18th of March 1930. This was soon followed by performances of her subsequent plays, The Disciple in 1931 and Temporal Powers in 1932. A play which won her the Abbey's new play competition for that year. Her next play was the very powerful one act play, The King of Spain's Daughter, staged in 1935. The following year, she produced her most well-known work, the play Katie Roach. This play was declared a masterpiece by at least one critic who wrote, My knowledge of Miss Teresa Davies' previous work had prepared me for a vital and unusual play, but not for a masterpiece. Masterpiece is a word to be used sparingly, but I have no hesitation in applying it to Miss Stevie's Katie Roach. In the middle years of the 1930s, Teresa produced no less than six separate plays as she displayed an impressive burst of creativity that excited theatre goers and gave them expectations for the future. However, Teresa herself was not satisfied with the Abbey. She wrote to a friend, Something will have to be done about the theatre in Ireland. It's appalling. In public, she railed against the Irish theatre critics of the 1930s and against their censorship. She would write, Who are these censors? And by what right do they hold office? And how, in the case of proved incompetence, can they be removed? Theresa Davey was very outspoken in her opinions and we must remember that her plays The King of Spain's Daughter and Katie Roach were being performed in 1937, the same time that the Irish Constitution was being written. And we must realise that her underlying message was a challenging and subversive one. During this period in Ireland, the Conservative leadership was actively suppressing women's rights. 
Through her plays, Teresa showed how women were oppressed by men in Irish society. Women had few rights. In The King of Spain's Daughter, the character Annie Kinsella, forced by her father, faces a choice between marrying a man for whom she feels no love or a life of endlessly repetitive work in a factory. It's clear that either outcome will result in her unhappiness and oppression. And the scene in which she makes the decision was staged with a large road closed sign displayed above her. In the play Katie Roach, Divi develops her theme and starkly reveals the contrast between the new state of Ireland providing seemingly boundless opportunities to its citizens, yet severely limiting those opportunities for women. In this play, Theresa Divi is critical of Irish society because of the limited opportunities being offered to women by the Irish state. This is in marked position with the official view expressed in the 1937 constitution that women's duty is within the home to raise her family. Katie Roach is a reflection of Ireland in the 1930s, which a cultural war could be said to take place to determine what sort of society the nation would become, Catholic or non-religious. Very little changes have been made, but importantly, the values of people's lives in the play has been shown. In Ireland during the 1930s, there was increased censorship within society, discussions of subjects such as sex, single mothers, critiques about the Catholic Church and its priests were not allowed. In 1939, the Abbey Theatre would accept one of her new plays, Holiday House, which a new director refused to have it stage at the Abbey. A man named Blythe rejected her next play, Wife to James Whelan. Any attempt by Devi to inquire of it was met by avoidance and evasion. She wrote to a friend about Blythe. In it, she writes, he has no use for my work, never asked to see any more. It may be a good thing to be finished with the Abbey, yet I love the Abbey and their actors are fine. She has only a single additional play. Light Falling, 1948. Stage there. A great deal of her later work would be almost exclusively produced for radio. It was truly remarkable that a deaf woman who could not participate in the experience of radio as a listener still excelled in writing for it. Still, Theresa Devi never abandoned writing plays to be performed at other theatres. In a sense, her life began to take the shape of that of her character from Katie Roach, in that her vivid creativity and artistic expression became necessary for her to get through her everyday experience in an oppressive society. Theresa Devi's play reveals the central theme of her work, especially in Katie Roach, shows that women can triumph against oppression. For example, in Katie Roach, her final lines are triumphant. I will be brave. I was looking for something great to do. Sure, now I have it. Theresa Devi finds her place with some of her writing, calling to mind some of the great writing of Yeats, Gregory and Martin, who came before her, while at the same time her work on the private lives of characters leads on to the next generation of writers, such as Brian Friel. It seems she is more often overlooked. Could it be her gender and society's greater disregard for the achievements of women that is at fault? For more information on Theresa Devi, please visit the Theresa Devi Archive online. In grateful acknowledgement, this information has been translated from Trinity College Dublin, Professor Chris Morash's article published in the site.